strap the guitar to the player. Hello everybody and thank you for the chance to present my musicological and socio-material analysis about the guitar strap at this conference. My name is Roman Dufner and I am a musicologist and sociologist from Austria. Currently I'm writing my PhD thesis at the Anton Bruckner Privat University in Linz. I know starting the presentation with a German song in an English conference may seem strange. However, the video clip and the text of the song are a good starting point for the topic. You have seen and heard the song Gitarre runter from the German punk musician Bella B, released in 2006. In the refrain he sings, tell me why you carry the guitar so high, put it lower as if you had just picked it up, otherwise it looks stupid and anything but beautiful. This song is about the carrying and playing position of the guitar. And as the text reveals, this playing position is controversial, at least in popular music performances. This becomes clear in Bella Bay's strong derogatory social judgment. It looks stupid and anything but beautiful. Such a statement raised several questions. How should the guitar be carried? How high or how low? What is advantage in terms of playing technique? What is advantages uh, for performances? And why should I lower the guitar? The controversial carrying and playing position is only one of several aspects of the use of the guitar strip, which triggers further communication, discussion, or even help seeking and workarounds. In this presentation, I will present some findings of my empirical work. When considering the guitar strap, we can identify three basic characteristics, which raise certain questions that I will explore in more detail in this presentation. First, the strap or other carrying devices are optional devices. For the practice of playing the guitar, it is not necessary and it can be basically omitted. This characteristic raised the question, why do musicians add this device? A second characteristic is that strap-like carrying devices are an ancient technology that has been used for a long time. Moreover, it does not need a specific material or sophisticated know-how to create a strap-like carrier. Usually, it is enough to use a flexible material that is attached to the instrument. This raised the question, why are there so many differently designed and purchasable straps? Third, the strap is a rather unspecific technology. The strap does not determine a certain usage. It is true that typical forms of the use have established. Commonly, the strap is placed over the shoulder and back. But as I will show, there are different adaptations to optimize the functionality to one's own needs. Here the question arises, how can the strap be used? These three questions are the rough framework of this presentation. First, I will discuss how the strap contributes to the guitar's playing experience. By using a strap, we can determine two tasks which are delegated to the carrying device. First, carrying the weight of the instrument. Without the strap, this task is entirely taken over by the musician. In a sitting position, for example, the instrument rests on the thighs and the arms and hands support in stabilizing the instrument. In this way, the musician is tied to a specific place in the room. With the delegation of the carrier task to the strap, the spatial binding disappears. The second delegated task is the holding the instrument task. This task is usually also performed by the arms and hands of the musician. In order to perform this task by the device, it needs stable fixation points at the instrument and a reliable but flexible connection to the strap. In case of a successful cooperation, this add-on has positive consequences for the playing practice. First of all, arms and legs are alive and the body is freed from a spatial fixation, so that different gestures and forms of expression can be performed. The inclusion of the strap also facilitates the handling of large, bulky and heavy instruments. Moreover, the strap positions the instrument at a certain playing height. Its flexible design, however, allows the musician to adjust the position of the instrument. Finally, it ties the guitar to the musician. The instrument is always at hand, even when it is not in use. At the beginning of my research, I assumed that carrying devices 
have always been a partner in guitar music performances. During my analysis, I discovered two historical shifts in the usage. First, as far as I have been able to trace, it has become apparent that modern and mass-produced guitar swap has only been distributed and used since the 1950s. Thus, its success coincides with the advent of the solid-body electric guitar. Until the 1950s, a wide variety of simple materials were used, such as cords, small leather straps or ribbons. A second shift seems to have taken place at the end of the 16th century. In paintings and drawings of instruments of the lute family, before the first third of the 16th century, I could not find any explicit depiction of a carrier device. And even during much of the 16th century, there are hardly any depiction of this carrier, or even of an end pin at the lower end of the lute body. Towards the end of the 16th century, and especially from the end of the 17th century, there are more frequent representations of a strap in use. Certainly, an aesthetic change in the depiction cannot be completely excluded. The increasing illustration in drawings and paintings coincides with the developments in playing techniques, changing instrument construction and changing music style. During the 16th century, the thumb outside playing technique for the lute established. With this technique, the arm of the picking hand is more vertical to the strings of the instrument. This makes it less stable to hold the instrument. In addition, during this period, the number of courses increases continuously, making the instrument larger and heavier. The compositions become more and more complicated, which places a higher demand on the flexibility of fingers and arms. Finally, at the end of the 16th century, in Italy, the new musical style of the monodi developed with which the large and bulky teorbo become a standard instrument. Especially in the use of the teorbo, the use of a strap-like ribbon is often shown. Based on this data, I assume that it was only with these developments that the systematic use of such carriers become established. The modern guitar strap can be traced back to the 1950s. Here, the US patent of SR Sotil is a first reference. Presumably, various straps were developed at the time. However, Sotil's is the first patented one and the design he proposed dominated with some adaptations the strap design in the 1950s and early 1960s. Sotil also founded the Bobby Lee Company, which was a central company in the development of straps for many years. The strap itself is said to have been developed by Sotil in the late 1940s, while the solid body electric guitar was still in its infancy. The reason for the development was an accident with a strap in which his guitar was broken. This accident caused his interest to construct a reliable strap. Interesting about this patent, apart from his non mashup promise, are firstly the strap paddy, which widens the support surface of the strap, and secondly, the two ways of attaching the carrier to the instrument. While attachment to the headstock was common at the time, he also suggests attachment to the top of the body. This attachment position, while not unknown, was less in use until the 1950s. For electric guitars, this attachment point became the standards because it ensures a more stable position for the heavier instruments. While this modern guitar strap was not directly designed for electric guitars, its success coincides with the mass proliferation of heavy solid body and with the popular practice of playing the instrument in a standing position. Due to these circumstances, there may have been a need for solid, comfortable and reliable straps. The cooperation with the carrier turns out to be somewhat difficult. This is first evident in the holding task. In simple systems, cords or straps are tightly knotted to the instrument. Modern carriers use a pin-button hole principle for the holding function. With this solution, however, the buttonhole must always be larger than a pin. This connection entails an interest conflict. On the one hand, it should serve the need for a reliable fixation. On the other hand, this connection system should also ensure interchangeability, optionality and movability. Overall, the system has a primacy of easy detachability. 
The reason for this are manifold. Such a system ensures easy and uncomplicated interchangeability, which allows individualization of the carrier. Beside this, the principle is quite simple and well known. Theoretically, it does not require any extra description. However, with the primacy of easy detachability, the carrier becomes an unreliable partner in the performance. Incorrect handling or even unintended movements can destroy the performance at any time. This unreliability provoked musicians to deal with this weak attachment point. Various do-it-yourself strategies have developed and often duct tape became the solution to the problem. One of this is to tape the lower end of the strap, while this solution eliminates the easy detachability and thereby solves the problem, it is simultaneously a staging of a punk attitude and thus a symbolic display of a cultural affiliation. In addition to this do-it-yourself solutions, other variants have developed over the last 70 years that attempt to combine the primacy of easy detachment with a reliable carrier function. One strategy that has been particularly advanced by guitar builders is to enlarge the pin head. In doing so, they increase the fixation surface. Even more complex are the countless patents on guitar locks. Such specific technical devices provide a reliable fixation with a consistently high mobility. However, for the guitar lock patent that you can see here, a special pin must be attached to the guitar and therefore the guitar must be adapted. Although the pin buttonhole system is problematic, it seems to be practicable enough, so it is still the standard for guitar straps. The delegated carrying task is also consequential for the playing practice. The strap merely transfers the weight of the instrument to the body. In addition to this activity, it also positions the instrument at the desired playing height. The strap is therefore only a translating instance, which strongly influences the carrying behavior through its material and shape. By transmitting the weight to the body, the strap can be a significant source of physical strains. In order to distribute the load over the body, various solutions have been developed and here again in strong relation to heavy solid bodies. For example, straps have been padded, equipped with padding straps or particularly wide straps have been used. The larger the surface area and the more stable the material, the more relief they provide. Beside distribution of the weight, the shape and the material play an important role in the movability of the instrument. Wide leather straps with full grain leather hardly slip. Especially with head heavy instruments, the strap can prevent the neck of the instrument from sinking. Other musicians with lighter instruments, on the other hand, prefer a higher degree of instrument movability in their performance. Straps made of nylon or fabric can ensure this. The used shape and material thus refer to playing practice and experience and thus reveal structural elements such as playing needs and values. Finally, I would like to address the question of how to use the strap. At the beginning, I already stated that the strap is a rather unspecific technical device. It does not explicitly specify how it should be used. Accordingly, it can be applied to one's own needs in playing, practice or even staging. The best way to use the strap is broadly discussed, for example, in the internet. As you can see in this picture series, there are many different possibilities in usage. While most of them vary minimally, there are two special cases. First, the hardcore punk guitarist Steve Albini simply wrapped the strap around his belly in his performances. Today, there are many specific straps which adopt a belt-like system. Another example of specific adoption can be found by slide guitar players. In this case, the picking hand goes around the strap so that the instrument can be played in a stable horizontal position, which is important for sliding. Another often seen adoption is placing the strap on the shoulder of the picking hand. This is especially common among mandolin and banjo players and particularly noticeable among bluegrass musicians. Playing with a wide brimmed hat may play a significant role in using this strapping style. By placing the strap on the picking hand, the hat does not have to be taken on and off, 
which can play an important role, especially in performances in front of the camera. The similar use of the carrier by different musicians of one musical style over a longer period of time could be a symbolic reference to musical traditions and role models. This becomes evident with a series of well-known blues musicians. Beside the bluegrass musicians, this is the only music style in which I could find such an accumulation of this playing position over a longer period of time. From my point of view, it is therefore obvious that in this genre, at least for a certain group, a playing practice has developed through which all the symbolic work of belonging is done. Apart from the way of strapping the guitar, the central question in the use of the guitar strap is the position of the instrument. Here the contribution of the strap is the adjustability to the individual height and then the stabilization of the selected position. The position of the instrument shaped the appearance of the musician. A high carrying position has many playing advantages. The angle of the fretting hand is less severe and thus puts less strain on the wrists. In addition, the high ranges of the instrument can be reached more easily. This carrying practice can be associated with certain music styles like progressive rock. In addition to the playing advantages, the high position also has the effect that the instrument is directly connected to the upper body and follows all the movements of this body part. Moreover, the arms are bent. This contributes to a rather stiff and seemingly cramped appearance. In contrast, the low playing position presents a different picture. The arms are outstretched and tend to hang down from the body, creating a more relaxed appearance. The upper body is also free and can move a little more independently of the guitar. Overall, this creates a different interaction between the musician and the instrument, in which the musician seems more distant to the instrument, as Frith and McRobbie described already in 1978. The low position, however, also means that the fretting hand is more bent and thus more strained, making it more difficult to play high ranges of the instrument. In consequences, this appearance may suggest less complex music. The disadvantages of the low carrying position are counteracted in playing practices, which in turn contributes to the image of the cock rock. The solution is to lift the neck of the guitar. This not only changes the angle of the fretting hand, but also pushes the high ranges of the instrument up. Accordingly, it is not surprising that especially in the ecstatic solos, which also involves a lot of playing in the high ranges, the guitar, with the help of the strap, is brought into an erected position. As my research shows, the guitar strap co-creates the image of the rock guitar player. In addition to the sonic expression that the electrification of the guitar has brought, the use of the strap and playing in a standing position contributed significantly to the attribution of a seeming coolness of the guitar player. Especially the low carrying position creates a more relaxed and dominant appearance of the musician, which is also reflected in a performed masculine sexuality. Apart from that, the cooperation with the strap entails the attribution of mobility. The guitar strap allows the guitarist to move freely on stage and thus take a strong presence in the performance, which is apparent in the guitar showmanship. Thus, the strap also contributes to the attribution of freedom to the guitarist. That this attribution has a high value in popular music is visible in advertisement for portable synths. The strappable Moog Liberation is advertised with the slogan Treat yourself to freedom. Freedom is thus associated with stage mobility, which is guaranteed by the cooperation with the carrier. In summary, the study of the strap shows that such a simple device is strongly involved in the music practice. Different form of use reveals problems and experience resulting from the cooperation. All in all, the modern guitar strap can be understood as an imperfect and tricky collaborator that significantly co-creates the figure of the guitar player.